anybody who's ever flown aboard an airplane contemplates what it might be like to crash. My most recent book is about a plane crash I was in right after the publication of my first book in the summer of 1979. The crash came without warning. It was deep fog in the middle of the night. We were notified by the cabin that we would be landing in 10 minutes, then lights out. Time never had a chance to stand still. It was instantaneous, the crash. The first thing on anyone's mind is when airplanes crash, they catch fire, and we were trapped in the airplane. I remember waiting for the sound of sirens. I expected ambulances and trucks with foam to come out onto the runway. I had no idea at the time, nor did anybody on the plane, that we were in the middle of the woods beyond anyone's help, and that if we were going to live through this, it was up to us. The event that the book grows out of lasted no more than about two hours. The first several minutes of which was our trying to escape the airplane before it caught fire. The emergency exits were wedged in by trees and it's thick, dense woods. We couldn't get more than about 50 feet from the airplane. And there we sat until rescuers showed up after an intense two hours in the woods. From that moment on, I never saw any of the people that I had spent that night in the woods with. This is not my story alone. It's the story of the people who were with me that night and the people who experienced what I experienced. The research that I did in putting this book together brought me in touch with those people for the first time in 30 years. The most difficult thing for me to do in writing this book was making the first phone call. I was very sensitive about reaching out to these people and asking them to revisit this event. The first phone call I made was to a woman named Suzanne, who was really the hero of the night. She just kept going back into this airplane that we thought was going to burn and carrying people out. And then this young woman walked out into the woods in the middle of the night trying to get help. The story would be incomplete without the story of her experience that night. In addition to talking to the survivors, I talked to the rescue personnel. I ran into one paramedic who went into the woods that night in topsiders and a t-shirt and spent all night fighting the bugs and fighting the woods to try to find us. There was plenty to write about from the point of view of many, many people. It became a story that I could tell on many levels. And it's because everybody brought a little piece of information with him or her. There was a time when I thought I knew what happened that night. I thought I knew everything about it and all that I would ever need to know about it. In writing the book, I learned so much more than I had ever known.